I'm a senior, class of 2017, at the Bronx High School of Science in New York City. Welcome back to lesson 3 of this free introductory JavaScript course. In this lesson, we will get introduced to the key programming concept of conditional logic. We will run one piece of code if and only if a condition is true, and another piece of code if the condition is false. We make if-else decisions every day in real life. For example, if it is raining, bring an umbrella. If not, don't bring it, or bring something else. To start, we need the lesson 2 functions buttons file open. If you don't have this file, you can go back to video 2 and do the lesson yourself, or you can just go down to the description box and download the file. So after you have the file open, do a file save as, and rename the lesson 3 if else logic. Save and close out lesson two. First, change title to JS3 if else logic. And do the same thing for H1. Now, go down to H3 and replace the text inside the tags with if a condition is true run some code else run some other code change your text in between the button tags to click me and replace this with click the button. Now go down to the JavaScript code and add a new global variable, call it message, and let us set, uh, set it equal to an empty string. We'll replace the value of the string with the result of our if statement. As you can see in the function, the first thing we have is the clicks plus plus incrementer. And that means the value of the clicks will increase by one every time we run the function. But what if we want to change the message based on the number of clicks? We can do that with an if statement. In JavaScript, if statement starts with the word if, followed by a pair of parentheses, and inside the parentheses goes a condition to evaluate. If the condition is true, we run some code. And this code goes inside a pair of curly braces. Add the following comment. Code to run if condition is true. Now for the condition to evaluate. Inside the parentheses, write clicks greater than 9, and the message, wow, you're in double digits. Let's just add a line break after that. Now, I'll put this message into document.getElementById command. So type the variable message plus the total button clicks. Now save this and preview in the browser. As you can see, when we got to 10, the message appeared. But the message only appears when the condition clicks is greater than 9 is true. We can add a message 
when the condition is not met. So else, open and closing curly brace. Set the message equals to good job, but keep clicking. Save it and refresh your browser. We can see that the message appeared after the first click. And it switches when number of clicks is greater than nine. Let's add a line break here too. The if else does not only limit to two conditions. We can have more than two. And that is done with an else if. So let's set, let's set the condition to clicks is greater than or equal to five. And set the message to high five. Save and refresh your browser. We can see that when it gets to five, the message high five appears. Let's look at another example of if else logic. This time, we are going to output a greeting based on the time of day that we get from the user's computer. To do that, we need to use a date class, which is a built-in JavaScript function that we can use by declaring a variable. So let's go to the global variable section and declare a new variable, call it greeting, set it equal to an empty string where we will output the greeting from our if else statement. To get the date and time from the user's computer, we need to use the date class, a built-in JavaScript function that will return the exact date and time from the user's computer. To do that, we need to set var date time equal to new date Let's make an alert that will tell exactly what the date class outputs. So alert date time, semicolon, save it and refresh your browser. We can see that it outputs date and time from the computer, from the year to the exact second. Let's comment out the alert. What we need to do is to set the greeting based on the time of day, but to do that, we only need the hour. So we are going to use a method of the date class called dot get hours. So declare a new variable, call it hour, and set that equal to date time dot get hours. alert to see what it returns. Save it and refresh your browser. It says 21, which is 9 p.m. Comment it out. Now go down to the function and copy this if else statement. and paste it below. Change the condition to if hour is less than 12, we are going to display the greeting of good morning. Leave a space. Else if, if the hour is less than 18, which is 6 p.m., set the greeting equal to good afternoon. Else, 
the greeting is good evening. To output this greeting, let's replace this hello with the variable greeting and just take out this from JavaScript because we know it's from JavaScript. Save and refresh. Click on the button and it works. It says good evening, Janice. We can play around with the condition and change the hour. Let's change it to 22, which is 10 p.m because it's not yet 10 p.m. Save it and refresh your browser. It says good afternoon because it is not yet 10, means the hour is less than 22. To recap, we learned how to use if else logic in two examples. In the first example, we output a message based on the number of clicks. In the other example, we output a greeting based on the time of day. In both examples, if a condition is true, we run some code. Else if another condition is true, we run some other code. Else, we run a third code. In the second example, we use the date class, which is a built-in JavaScript function that returns the exact date and time from the user's computer. That is it for lesson three, and I'll see you in lesson four.